Good morning from Burn Abbey Ruins, just northeast of Airbird, Exerb Air Airbird Observatory. Um, if you watched our last episode, we travelled from Israelite Bay to where we are right now. And this is kicking off the next one, heading east. So today on the cards, uh, we are continuing to track along the old telegraph track. Uh, east of the Airbird Observatory. think we'll end up coming out at Madura. Uh, we've got a few caves along the way that we're going to go check out. So we're all packed up, we're going to hit the road and it should be a good one. Yo. So these are the Burn Abbey ruins. Uh, had a bit of a look into the history of this place and it used to be an old um, livestock property and I think it was abandoned close to a hundred years ago now. It's got like a little chook pen, veggie garden. Big ass spiders. Oh yeah, some monster <laughs> spiders. Well, it's a pretty cool spot to have a look around. There's a lot of history along here. Got an old fence line over there and some uh, livestock pens. And our campsite last night was maybe 50 meters uh, to the west and surprisingly pleasant night. Paul normally gets a bit sad if we don't camp near water. Can't then. If we're going for a trip, yeah. And this is nowhere near water, but it was beautiful. We're sort of right on the ridge line. You can see the dunes just in the distance over there. Ridge goes up that way. On the other side is the Nullarbor Plain. So just a handful of trees along the ridge. Very pleasant. No wind. So our next little mission for the day is to try and find Burn Abbey Cave. So it's on Google Maps, but there's... Yeah, I keep seeing them too. Um, so yeah, it says that there's a cave, it's a couple of k's off the main track uh, and it also doesn't indicate that there is any track going to it. So we're just sort of on the lookout at the moment for any side tracks that might be um, heading down there. Otherwise, I don't know, maybe we go for a walk in, maybe we just keep going because there's heaps of other caves around that we know we can get to. Um, but that's our little mission at the moment is just keeping an eye out for any sign of a track that leads towards Burnaby Cave. Well sadly there's absolutely no sign of any tracks going down to Burnaby Cave or Old Wolgan Cave which is another one that um, is on the map uh, pretty close to Burnaby so uh, we're just going to pick up the pace a little bit now head towards Madura um, Roadhouse on the Nullarbor and try and get some fresh food there. We are in real danger of getting scurvy. And then from there, just keep exploring some of the caves around. Uh, probably take the Nullarbor um, Highway, Air Highway um, East to Mundra Billa. And then it looks like we can jump off the highway again and back onto the old telly track all the way to Eucla. So I think that's sort of the loose plan that's forming now uh, for the next few days and the rest of this episode. So we've just pulled up at the old Telegraph Linesman camp. We didn't actually know what it was. We just saw the side road and came for a look and it's pretty cool. I'm gonna think of worst places to camp out 
building a telegraph line. Got that ridge around there. Nice flat plain on the other side. And heaps of ruins, old tin. Got like a little chook pen. Does anybody know if these are edible? Because I keep stopping Paul from eating them. They're either edible or they'll kill you, I reckon. And in the side of the ridge up here, it looks like there's a bit of a cave. So we're going to go for a little explore. See what we can find up there. When you're tracking out the bush, you really want to have the right attire, so you really want to have some nice ankle protecting boots just in case you see snakes or anything. Unlike these ones down here, these wouldn't really protect you like all. These are my hiking pluggers. One dollar Kmart pluggers? Yeah. Must be something dead in there. No, this is cool air. It's really cool air coming out of it. Yeah. Right. And I keep saying it, but the landscape is crazy. You got this ridge here with all these rocks. And it continues further around with a few less rocks and a few more trees, like where we camped last night. And then you got the dunes in the distance and the flat salt bush plains between them. Well, I've driven the Nullarbor that many times, I reckon like 14 times, and I never realised any of this was here. It just goes zooming past on the highway. When we're running, running, running parallel to it, it's just beautiful. And the track, really, really good in comparison to what we've been doing the past week. Oh, easy sit on 50, 60 k's an hour cruising. Yeah. Only reason you can't go any faster is just because it's a bit windy and it's only a single trail, so. This is true. cave of the day. First one we can find. First one we can find. Multiple other ones, but Carly was too lazy to go find. So this is Madura Caves. It's probably an important piece of information. Cave 
ready. Like that. Into a whole room. Why don't we have a big one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, fuck off, you lot. Is this bigger than Cockle Bear Cave? Yeah. Oh, it's different. Cockle Bear Cave is like a bigger hole, it's bigger ceilings, and it just goes straight down, and there's water. Yeah. I mean, you can't, like, you can't go as deep as that. That's cool. That is definitely worth a 18 minute drive off the highway. Doesn't look like much from the top. Way bigger underneath than it looks from the opening. Yeah. You wouldn't even know it was here. Just Google. So, since we stopped in at uh, Madura Cave, uh, we just head back onto the Air Highway, tracked east for about an hour to Mundrabilla Roadstead, um, topped up fuel there, managed to get some milk, which is very exciting, and uh, now we are proper freestyling it. Uh, on a track that pretty much starts opposite the um, the roadhouse at Mundrabilla um, and we're just heading towards the coast there's nothing on wiki camps down this area there's a few tracks on Google and Hema none have any destinations We've got no idea if the beach is beach or if the beach is cliffs, um, but we're going. We're going for a look. We'll check in again once we've found a camp for the night. Here's where that'll be. So we made it to camp. We found a nice little secluded spot in these dunes, out of the wind, just off the beach. So we are directly south of Mundrabilla. Um, we came, followed the track directly south, which was, the track was just west of the roadhouse. Followed that down, come past some shanty town sheds that people have kind of built, and then followed their noses and found this pretty little primo spot. G'day and welcome to tonight's episode of Grim Camp Kitchen.
barbecue pizza shapes. They're not, they're not pizza shapes. Barbecue shapes. <laughs> Another red horse. So, it's been 13 days since we hit the road. We haven't done a fresh food shop since we left. And I don't think I mentioned this yet, but before we left, my ever cool 65 litre fridge shit the bed on the last trip. And that has been in with the service technician for five weeks now. No end in sight. So I'm running Paul's smaller angle. So I've got less food than we would normally take and a longer trip than we would normally do. So what have we got left? One sausage. Three rashes of bacon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ration this. I'm only gonna use one tonight. We got like four super sad mushrooms. Half a sad onion. And then some tin tomatoes, penne pasta, some textured vegetable protein. So this stuff is used as filler in meat pies. So I'm gonna cook that in some veggie stock and a little bit of soy sauce for a bit of umami flavors. So I'm making a pasta bake. I'm gonna cook it all in the, in the fry pan. And then when it's done, I'm gonna transfer it into the little steel containers that we've got into the travel buddy and cover it in cheese. So I've just sliced up the sad onions, sad mushrooms, uh, sliced the sausage, diced up the bacon nice and small. Uh, so that's ready to cook. And now just heating up the water to cook the pasta and also cooking the uh, textured vegetable protein. So that ratio is just one to one. And it's a good mint substitute that will keep in your pantry for long periods of time. So if you want something with a mint texture or whatnot, um, but you don't have the fridge space, then textured vegetable protein is a great substitute. Just gonna bang in the stock. Also the last of the stock. and a good splash of soy sauce. All right, now that water's pretty much come to the boil. It's probably too much. And just gonna fry up all these ingredients that I chopped earlier. All right, pasta's still cooking. The sausage and bacon's all browned off. I'm just gonna add in some of that uh, TVP now. And then a big chunk of garlic. Add all three. Now I'm just gonna mix in the tin tomatoes. Definitely made too much. It's a lot in a pasta bag. Yeah, I'm hungry. Alright, this is the last of our cheese. Grim pasta bake. So while Carly has been prepping up dinner, I just went for a bit of a walk around, took the old ox sack with me. But in five minutes, fill it up. So I think I'll empty the ox sack into one of the respective bush. Two in, two out bags that were kindly donated by a Drifter. and get back out there and get some more. Well, 
we are back on the road again. Uh, it was a pretty nice night last night. Uh, I just pulled up in the dunes by the beach. It is a pretty weird area where we stayed though. I'm, I'm not really sure if we're allowed to camp there. I'm not sure if it's just crown land. Pretty sure it wasn't a nature reserve. Didn't see any signs to say that it was private land, but the shanty town that was pretty close to where we camped was a bit strange. Um, so happy to be back on the road this morning. Um, but yeah, we're tracking along nicely this morning. Another beautiful day. And not really sure where we're gonna end up. Whether we'll go all the way through to Eucla. Um I did see when we had some reception yesterday that tomorrow is gonna be a scorcher, so I'm thinking beach day. So I've had a little look on um, Google satellite view and found a couple of spots that look like they might be nice beaches just west of Eucla. Um, so we'll see, see where we end up. west of Eucla and we've been tucking down these little side tracks trying to find a nice little beach coves or anything that's around the place. Last one the beach was a bit but yeah a bit a lot of seaweed and not very nice beach so hopefully this one comes up with the goods. Bottles everywhere. Oh, this guy chopping up the beach. feel soft but when you break that crust yeah it goes down not the worst beach we've seen the water still looks real milky I don't think I'm going to get too close to the water though. yeah that's fair see how the like, water looks milky yeah it's weird I think it's the same yeah Super fine. I think that's all it is. Not the most weed of any beach we've been on. I just don't know how much better it's going to get <laughs> if we keep going. Well, there's like bigger dunes over there. It's like better with bigger dunes. It's so flat. Yeah. Well, right. It's better to find a nice beach for the next couple of days than have a shit beach. It's true. We really have to, we can just jump on the air highway and fuck across the Fowler's Bay as well. Mm. So we've just been deliberating while Paul makes lunch, which is the grim pasta bake with cheese and jaffles. 
Um, the beaches along here are nice, but they're very, very soft and very, very seaweedy. Uh, and they don't look really nice for swimming. So noting how hot it's gonna be over the next few days, uh, plan from here is we're gonna to head to Eucla. We're only about 20 k's from Eucla now. Uh, and we'll look to try and stay the night there. And then tomorrow morning we're gonna gun it across into South Australia and then look to stay somewhere, maybe a little west of Fowler's Bay. And then pull up there for a couple of days. Enjoy the beach and sunshine. And not enjoy the 40 degrees. Paul won't enjoy it. I love it. You win some, you lose some. If it's going to be 40 degrees, we may as well be at a nice beach. So. Well, as long as we're at a nice beach, get the awning set up. Yeah. Uh, so now we are at the Eucla Telegraph Station. Yeah, we are. So we've made it. Yep. Israelite Bay to Eucla all on the old telly track with the exception of about one hour on the highway. Um, so yeah, let's go have a look. Apparently it's all coming up in the sand. Has, has been quite a few years since I've been here. Last time I was here as a kid. It was a little bit sticking out, but yeah, supposedly there's nothing now. Which is a bit of a shame when you see um, how the Air telegraph station has been restored to. Sorry, the audio is probably rubbish. It is very windy. It's WA, windy as. Definitely get taken over by sand. I started recording. Caravan Park. So it's given us a little bit of time to think about what we do next. As I think should be the case with all semi-important decisions, we put it to an Instagram poll, whether we should keep going east to South Australia or start heading home via Esperance, because it is gonna be hot as the next few days. And people have spoken, including you. You're a traitor. Esperance. He suggested Fowler's Bay and then he voted for Esperance. Yeah. So we're gonna head, we're gonna head uh, back to the west now, uh, straight to Esperance. So that's where we're gonna leave this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, covered some incredible countryside, taken tracks and visited places that we had no idea even existed when we started this episode. 
Well, if you like the episode, you know what to do. See you in the next one. Good morning, and welcome back to a new episode of Adventure Unlimited. Who's <laughs> going to get you in the cave? Still recording? No. No, it's on. Oh, f I stopped you, <laughs> you dog. No, see, it shit itself again. It's f yeah.